Yes, this is Nessie, the most honored and trusted profession in the world, regarded by some as a much higher spiritual calling than merely a profession, a profession steeped in rich values based on the work of the celebrated Florence Nightingale. Often called the mother of modern nursing, Florence Nightingale helped revolutionize the world of nursing and set the standards for the profession as it is known today. Here at home, the much celebrated Cecilia Makiwani is the first registered professional black nurse in South Africa. She died due to ill health at the tender age of 39. This was in 1919, just a mere nine years after the death of Nightingale, who herself was born on May 12, in 1880. Now, International Nurses Day is celebrated around the world every May 12th, the anniversary of Florence Nightingale's birth. So on the eve of this day, we today focus our discussion on the nursing profession. Our guests will help us understand the significance of this International Nurses Day current issues affecting the nursing profession, and perhaps more importantly, how the nursing profession can contribute towards strengthening health systems and achieving a better and healthier life for all. So sit back and learn from this exciting show ahead. You can be part of this show again by calling us with the questions or views on joining us at 714-6843-6847 or 6857 or simply interact with us on our Facebook page, SABC Health Talk, and on Twitter at SABC Health Talk. I'm Dr. Sindhu Muttaoum and this is Health Talk. I'm running on college department at the moment, which is a very challenging department to work at because I'm dealing with very, very sick patients. And the only reward I can tell you guys that I'm getting out of my work is when patients get healed when they get into remission and we can send them back home and they can go back and be rehabilitated in the community. Nursing is described as a rewarding career that comes with a lot of benefits. Nurses play an important role in changing people's lives, prevent diseases, encourage healthy living and help patients to deal with various illnesses. Proper training is a crucial aspect of nursing. Very, very important because we need to constantly upskill staff on a daily basis when we're doing our rounds, we're constantly teaching the staff, ensuring that they are carrying out the orders, ensuring that they're understanding what is expected of them. So it's a constant teaching. The nursing field has a wide range of career opportunities to choose from. Individuals that choose nursing as a career have the opportunity to make a difference on an everyday basis. Sister Lerato Atong, a unit manager at Nedcare Garden City Hospital, says passion and dedication is the only weapon that kept her going for the past 20 years of her career. It's, it's exposing to help people to heal well. And it's so nice to see people being coming from the way they are being ill and then going home feeling, feeling very well and being thankful, thankful for what you did to them. It makes you as a human being to be happy to say, you know what, I did save a life in life and that way I'm also impressed with what I'm doing because I love saving people's life. During his address to the Parliamentary Health Portfolio Committee last August, Health Minister Dr. Aaron Motsoledi said the department was doing all it could to stop nurses from leaving South Africa. However, the challenges in the nursing profession still continue to force South African nurses to take their skills abroad for better working conditions and better salaries. The challenges that I've picked up when you are in a nursing is all about shortage of staff, but each and every company, unfortunately, has got a shortage of staff. Nursing was once considered a female-dominated profession, 
but lately it has become popular for men as well. Despite the change, there are still challenges, stereotypes and misconceptions associated with being a male nurse. The challenge I get is when there's a female patient, there's certain things I can't do uh, unless I ask her permission. Even touching the arm, um, there's different religions. Some religions don't want even to come close to the uh, female patient. So those challenges are the challenges I had to overcome by asking my female counterparts to help me when I deal with female patients becomes a huge challenge then when it comes to bathing patients because sometimes they can't help themselves, they need to be bathed and now I have to be there to help. Um, heavy patients that you need to attend, they also need male power. That's what females used to say when they want to abuse us as males. They say we need male power to lift patients so I have to ask a permission from the female patient to go in. Recent media reports recorded a number of cases across the country where nurses were victims of numerous crimes while on duty. But safety for healthcare workers is not only focused on criminal activities such as assault, nurses are also at risk of catching infectious diseases. Any medical person working within the hospital, it's a hospital sick people come here, so they're exposed to germs and bugs and different infections within the hospital. So firstly, if a patient comes in with any form of infection and they require isolation period for TB or whatever, um, we give our nursing staff what we call protective clothing that they go in, so that will be the gown, the mask and stuff in order to work in that room with the patient. And then um, we also have isolation policies that we follow. We've got posters up on what type of isolation requires, what type of protective clothing etc. And then we also offer our staff, anyone as you start, when you come for your interview, you go for a medical checkup with the Human Resources Department and our Occupational Health and Safety Nurse. Right, so this is the state of the nursing profession today. Whilst we celebrate this noble nursing profession, we cannot hide from the fact that our healthcare system is laden with some challenges. Let's understand the extent and nature of these challenges from our special guest. First up is Professor Mazif Malauzi. Professor Mulauzi is chairperson of Fundisa, which is the Forum for University Nursing Departments in South Africa. Did I say that correctly? Yes, sometimes we use nursing departments or nursing deans. Nursing deans. Well, yes. welcome to Health Talk. Thank you. I might also act that, say that, uh, you know, Professor Mulauzi is head of the Nursing Sciences Department at the University of Pretoria. And next to Professor Malauzi, we have Dr. Sharon Vasudhavan. Dr. Vasudhavan is the acting president of SANC, or South African Nursing Council. Welcome to Health Talk once again. Thank you. All right. Today we did, we're talking International Nurses <coughs> Day because of, you know, obviously this is the e on the eve of International Nursing Day, just a few days before. Um, but in my introduction, I said that we, we, we cannot avoid talking about the problems facing the healthcare system in this country. So if I were to ask you mm -hmm. from your perspective, uh, let's start with you, Professor Malauzi. Yeah. What are the challenges facing the healthcare system in the country? Uh, I must say our healthcare system has got both private mm -hmm. and public wow. uh, uh, hospitals. Right. So that on its own create a challenge mm. in terms of access mm. and also issues of health financing. Right. Uh, clients are unable to access the private hospitals. They therefore become, go to public hospitals yeah. who then becomes a and do and uh, uh, you know they have more patients right. than what they can endure, okay. and that on its own puts pressure on the public hospitals that we have, yeah. and that is being caused by the fact that we are used to a curative system rather than a primary health care system. Well, I was about to say, I mean, when you started by you know differentiating between public and private hospitals, yes, and I'm thinking. That's precisely where the problem is. We, we're too hospice-centric. Our, our healthcare system is too hospice-centric. Yes. Whenever we think healthcare, we're thinking hospital. Yes. Isn't that so, Dr. Vasilov? Absolutely. Yeah. I think that uh, 
I mean, you know, just focusing on a curative model is also a very expensive model, right. uh, especially when you think of uh, human resources. I mean, one of our, the biggest challenges we have in this country in healthcare is a shortage of human resources. Right. And I think for us, especially in nursing, mm. we have a huge shortage in terms of registered nurses and specialist nurses. Yes. And we know there's a big demand for them in the hospital setting. Right. Yeah. Is, it, is it about distribution of the available ones or is it about just generally that we don't have enough? Let's talk, let's talk specifically nursing. Well, I think that uh, it could be a combination of both. Right. Uh, we do have perhaps uh, adequate nurses at certain levels, like our enrolled categories. Enrolled nurses and enrolled nursing auxiliaries, we seem to have a surplus of them. Uh, there's a shorter period of training, it's easier for them to qualify, and we seem to have enough in the market to uh, fulfill the requirements. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to registered nurses, yeah. I don't uh, believe that we are training adequate numbers to, uh, you know, for the facilities. Yeah. And as uh, Prof said, for both public and private. Yeah. And then also for us to think of uh, primary health care settings. Well, talk about it primary health care yes. and, 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 and the level, different levels of nursing. Perhaps let's come back to you, Prof. Mm -hmm. In terms of training, mm -hmm. clearly to try and move away from, I know we're going to talk solutions later on, mm. but to try and just kind of refocus our, our, our system mm. from a curative to, to a more primary and preventative, mm. we need to have a lot more at primary health care level, yeah. uh, community health nurses, mm. for, 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 for instance. Mm. Now let's talk about training of nurses. Are we training enough? I don't think we're training enough nurses. More especially, as, Prof, uh, as Dr. Vasutuven has already said, we are training more of the lower categories, more than the professional nurses. And that on its own put burden on professional nurses who are supposed to supervise the other categories. But, but I where think should the bulk of the work be? Shouldn't that be at, at a lower level as opposed to more, you know, higher level? It must be both okay. because we need people who are offering primary health care services, right. but who are critical thinkers, right. who will be able to manage the challenges that comes with working in the communities. Right. So as much as we need uh, lower categories, we will still need someone who will be able to supervise them okay. at so the at community University level. Of, at the University of Pretoria, then, what sort of level nurses do you train? We are training uh, nurses at graduate level. Okay. The BK uh, undergraduate level, yeah. and we are also doing what we call BK8A, where nurses who have a, d a diploma can come and specialize. Right. They specialize in primary health care, they specialize in emergency, trauma, yeah. and critical care nursing, as well as pediatric nursing. Okay. So, this is at a higher level. Now, Dr. Vasitavan, What's the role of the South African Nursing Council in terms of, you know, training of nurses and registration and, and, and so on? So the South African Nursing Council has been, uh, you know, involved in the accreditation of uh, nursing programs. And this is uh, spelled out in the Nursing Act. It has a role and function in terms of education and training of nurses. Mm -hmm. With the uh, promulgation of the revised or the new Nursing Act uh, came a change in categories of nurses. Mm. So we have, uh, you know, uh, we have three new categories, which, which is the existing nursing auxiliary, but obviously the qualifications at a higher level. Then we have the new staff nurse, which will, who will be trained at a diploma level. And the professional nurse will be trained at a degree level, as uh, professors just said, mm. uh, will be trained at higher education institutions. I don't want to say at university level, mm. because you know that colleges can also become higher education institutions. Well, talk institutions. about that, perhaps linked <coughs> to accreditation of training institutions. We now hear the fact that hospitals themselves can act as training institutions and they can actually train nurses. Confirm? Uh, not, not necessarily yeah. that hospital per se. Hospitals are used as clinical facilities right. where we need clinical learning opportunities for nurses to be able to go and learn the art and science of nursing. Mm -hmm. And so they've always been accredited as clinical learning facilities. Mm -hmm. But we do have 
some hospitals that tr are trained, uh, are accredited as training schools where right. they train the lower categories. Right. But to say that a hospital a independently yeah. can be a higher education institution right. and train nurses, right. I think that w would be a little far-fetched in the, in the present good, setup. It's good to <laughs> clarify that. Okay. So after the break, we now look at the challenges facing nurses in their day-to-day -day duties. Please stay with us. The souls, the OMG of the party, in all their glorious, well, glory. Ah, yes. We salute you, party comrade, with a bottle of three ships whiskey for just one one nine ninety nine from Tops at Spa. One other person has been shot dead and another is in a critical condition in hospital. The CRL has laid charges against controversial televangelist Paseka Mutsuaneng. More than 1.3 million South Africans have been added in the past two registration weekends. The International Monetary Fund warns that policy uncertainty could dampen economic growth in South Africa. And all eyes are on the new bot coach, Alistair Kutsia, his challenge to keep everyone in the country happy. Welcome back. Now, it is often said that a great nurse is compassionate, empathetic, selfless, self-aware, and is technically strong with a thirst for knowledge. Now, great nurses act, always act ethically in the best interest of the patient. However, nurses often face challenges in their profession, in their day-to-day -day duties. Now, let's hear more about the extent of this from our guests. We still have Professor Mavis Malaudzi, head of the department at... Uh, University of Pretoria, Nursing Sciences Department, but here representing Fundisa. Right, and now we're joined by another special guest, Simon Shumani. Simon is the president of DENOSA, Democratic Nursing Organization of South Africa. Welcome to Health Talk. Thank South. you very much. Uh, thank you for having us. All right, now perhaps let's start with you. I mean, we, we often say that, uh, or we hear stories, in fact, almost all the time that nurses are complaining, nurses uh, are facing challenges and so on. Let's hear from you. What are the challenges? Well, <coughs> let, let me try and put it in a manner that we narrate this nurse as an individual. Um, as nurses, what, what, what comforts us the most is when we see health outcomes. If somebody walks in with a stabbed um, wound or an abdomen that is stabbed, openly, or it's a patient, a grandmother, or anyone who's very sick. Mm. The minute that I see that person walking out of the hospital healthy, that's where we get fulfillment. Mm. If, if anyone comes with kidney problems or any other challenge, very sick, the minute that I see that person has improved health-wise and is going home discharged, mm. that's where we get our fulfillment because we have committed ourselves to service to humanity. Mm -hmm. But uh, That's the calling that, I was that's, referring that's, to. That's the calling that we have. Yeah. Now, it's, it's an off that we have taken, and it's what we have gone in terms of the grounding and the education and the training completely to be, to be trained. Mm. Now, and this person is a mother, a father, a sibling, you may call anything, because we are a family people as well, and we are part of the community and the society in general. So the outcome that we see within the community is what fulfills us generally. But the, in the other hand, imagine this person on a daily basis, when you are supposed to have a certain number of staffing in terms of the shortage of staff that we are having currently, um, you, you are understaffed continuously, in particular in the private, in the public sector. And it, it drains you because you do more than 
what you are supposed to be doing because basically you have you have fewer as let, well let's, as let's the, focus a little more on, on on being understaffed now you mentioned you understaffed especially in the public sector mm. at what level exactly yeah at the level of a of professional nurses which is what was referred to as registered nurses yeah. now these are the people you will find with some maroon epaulets um and that is a category that is only category allowed to can run a ward yeah. to can supervise the rest mm. so 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 this category is in a, in dire need in midwifery areas you will find the maroon epaulets with a green bar and these people are supposed to be the ones that are delivering um, uh, women that are, are delivering in a hospital. It's not just any nurse who can deliver, yeah. but it must be somebody who is midwife retain. So now you're saying you, there's understaffing there There's as understaffing well. in those areas, even the specialties, your ICUs, yeah. trauma areas, yeah. theatre, What about understaffing. What about primary health care clinics away from hospitals now? We have a huge shortage in the primary health care setup. Um, just recently as Dinosa, we went to Mpumalanga, and we found that in a clinic at night, there's only two nurses, one of which was a professional nurse. It's a disaster. It means if you have um, two gunshots or stabbed wounds, because our society right now is violent, mm. you will have a challenge. In Ekuruleni, when around March, I think it was the 8th of March, when the nurses were, 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 were actually attacked by the community, it was because there was a patient that came with an, um, a stabbed abdomen. So the, the intestines were out. Now the nurses right there in a short it's skeleton stuffing that they had, they had to run and save this life. Another family comes with their mother. They say, no, stop attending that one. We want you to attend this one. Mm. Because this is our mother must leave. Now, out of that argument, because the nurses were caught in between a dilemma. I can't leave the person who's dying. I must save this life and send yeah. to the hospital before We'll, we'll I come back you to see? the issue of the public because I think that, that's also a bit of a problem. Let's, let's come back to you, Prof. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's mentioning the issue of uh, understaffing, which mm. is which is obviously what we spoke about, mm. and and perhaps let's let on the issue of you know public perception mm. of the nursing profession. Mm. Maybe it's safer for me to ask you mm. than him. Yes, <laughs> the, the, the the public out there perceives mm. nurses as people that are no longer committed to those you know principles that were outlined earlier. Mm. In fact, the the quality of nursing care has declined over a period of time. Your mm. comment on that. I think uh, the public obviously will have those comments based on the experiences that they sometimes have, like uh, uh, Simon was explaining. Mm -hmm. But nurses are working very hard. What I think we lack is the marketing strategy mm -hmm. to show what we are doing best. Mm -hmm. So usually the media follows what we are doing negatively mm. rather than what we are doing at our best. Mm. Yes, nurses are understaffed, but with the little that they have, they have been learned as early as when you are doing first year or second year to improvise, yeah. to give and render the best care that you can. Do you, in, your, in the training though, I mean, are they given coping skills? You know, dealing with the public is not an easy thing. I mean, he's just made an example of people that demand care because, you know, they think they are, you know, sick as, mm. as perhaps more important than anybody else. And, mm. and you can't blame them sometimes mm. for that. Now, are nurses given coping skills in their teaching? Nurses are given coping skills from the beginning. They are taught how to communicate with clients yeah. and patients. They are also taught on how to... Uh, uh, talk to the family, yeah. more especially when if the client or patient is being admitted. Okay. They are also taught how to do health education. So they have the coping skills. Okay. What is going on is that the understaffing just yeah. makes things sometimes very difficult. But nurses also have what we call now continuing education, yeah. where we offer ethical uh, uh, you know, modules okay. so that they can be able to cope and they can always remember that they are there for the patients. Okay. Let's come yeah. back to, to you then. Perhaps you <laughs> are obviously are burning to comment on the issue I'm, of I'm, the public I'm, perception. Yeah? I'm, I'm, I'm triggered by the coping skills part of it. I'll yeah. give you an example. Yeah. Here is a nurse who is in a clinic, in a rural area. Yeah. You are receiving a baby who's got a temperature. Maybe the temperature is skyrocketing at 38 degrees, 40 degrees. Mm. You know consciously, 
for me to reduce the temperature of this child, I must have Panadol. But because it's a baby, I must use Panadol syrup. But when you go to the, where you put your medicines, you only find Panadol tablets. What do you do? There's no, there's no improvision there. There's no coping skills there. You will cry because you know, I want to help this baby, but I have no means. We are failed by the management system in terms of the supply chain. We are failed by a management system in terms of the infrastructure itself. You still have clinics that if you are receiving a disabled person or a person with physical uh, uh, challenges, needs a particular rail to enter. There's just no ways that that person could enter. Now, what do you do? You are bound to lift the person because there's, there's no such a, a means to do so. Now, even if you can cope and are the strongest person, mm. it is the same as you here at SABC. You can come to work, but if you don't have a mic to utilize, what more can you do? Necessary drain. It's, it's a question of resources. Resources and that are fundamental. And, yeah. Shoot, there's quite a lot of problems. Okay, let, let's just hold it there because we're going to come back to solutions. So after the break, we now answer the question, why exactly do we celebrate International Nurses Day? Better and more after the break. Please stay with us. Today keeps you informed with news locally and around the world. When Judge John Thorpe um, challenged, the, uh, challenged the Supreme Court of Appeal when it sent the matter back and said that there must be an inquiry set up. We unpack business news. There's, a, there's an increase in general inflation in the country. We give you up-to-date news of the day. The drugs were seized at several locations in Sydney, including a shipping container sent from Hong Kong. Police say it's the largest haul of illicit drugs in two years. We round up sports news. Kotaka, tell me about the legacy that you would like to build and be remembered for. Trying to get my foundation running, which is going to focus uh, on, you know, all the sport doesn't matter, disability or able body. So, I mean, I'm passionate about sports. Stay informed every Monday to Friday from 3 to 5.30 p.m. CAT. SABC News. Welcome back. Now, as mentioned earlier, International Nurses Day is celebrated annually on May the 12th to coincide with the birthday of Florence Nightingale. Now, we're going to understand about the history and significance of this day from our guests. But bef before we start our discussion, we have three tweets. And I'll just quickly go over them. Mutsua Lady says, Working conditions have worsened. Occupational health and safety is not practiced to protect nurses. Nurses are paid peanuts. Uh, hashtag is this a better life says their attitude towards patients must also change. This so lady again says why nursing colleges are closed and continue to get sloppy and bad quality training from private colleges poor. Whatever. All right. So, so obviously there's, there's lots of issues and uh, again Simon there's issues about <laughs> <laughs> nurses attitude that in, has to change. Yeah. In fact um, we, we must acknowledge where there's negative feedback. Yeah. And we must accept in order to do and improve much better. Mm. Well, we, we, I can only talk about what Dinosa is doing. After realizing that we've got challenges in some areas of attitudes and so on, we then came up with an ICN, um, International Council of Nurses program. It's called Health Workers for Change. We want to implement it so that we can assist the nurses thereof. But what we find sometimes is executive authority in, in departments of health, especially in the provinces, mm. Their job or their specialties right now is rhetoric comments. Mm. And they forget that they are responsible to ensuring that they put programs in places that can improve such attitudes. 
we have called on all departments to employ chief nursing officers who must come up with programs that will address these things because we are trying to offer our part but we need them to also do their part so that we can improve professionally. Okay. You know, when it comes to the training of um, private colleges, yeah. you'll, you'll be shocked. For, for a nurse to be a trained nurse, you can't just do theory. Mm. You need the clinical training exposure. Right. That's why you, you would have a college must be attached to a hospital. Mm. But people who saw making money in training of nurses started jumping in and, and they got licenses to train. But they never had the interest at heart of having um, uh, nurses that are well best trained. Mm -hmm. So you will find that it's a college, but it does not meet the standards. And that's we'll, where the we'll, nursing council we'll comes that, that. And we'll, we'll try and get comment from the South African Nursing Council mm -hmm. on that. But let's get back to the issue of International Nurses Day now. And, and, and perhaps staying with you, okay. why International Nurses Day in South Africa? Why should we celebrate this? What's the significance? Well, um, as you know that we are paid peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are, what, we, the comment there is very, cor it's very correct. <laughs> um, we, we, basically, we are part of the working class society. Right. I don't need to have a house. I don't need to have the means of transport to get to work as a human being. But the 12th of May is the date of birth of uh, Florence Nightingale. As you would know that she's the pioneer of modern nursing. During the Crimean War, she worked very tirelessly uh, in nursing the soldiers. But we mu I must correct this thing. She was not the only person. Mm. There was a black nurse called Mary C. Cole, who was Jamaican. Yeah. And because the world across was so against a black skin, this person was never recognized. Mm. Um, and she also did very well, committed herself, gave up even her family and all she had. So on the 12th of May, it started because the ICN, at some stage around the 60s, then agreed that we must celebrate the International Nurses Day. This is where we need as nurses as well to be pampered, to yeah. be remembered for, remembered for the good work that we give. Nightingale is Italian. Yes. So in South Africa, why should we celebrate some Italian nurse? Yeah. We must, let me take you the history, take the history here. In South Africa, blacks and whites were treated differently. Obviously, you know about that. Mm. But even in nursing, we were not different. Um, at some stage, the International Council of Nurses around the 70s then said, you South African nurses are only white and discriminating against blacks. We are cutting you off the international nurses. So they were, we, were, we were suspended from participating in the international global politics of nursing. Until in 1997, when DINOSA was formed in 1996, we applied to be reinstated. Yeah. In the, inter in the Council of Nurses International. Okay, I just we agreed to... with yeah. having to celebrate that. So now for us, when we celebrate as South Africans, yeah. we're not only celebrating 19 Gale, we're celebrating Mary C. Cole. I was giving you that history. Right. We're celebrating Cecilia Makiwa. Right. We're, we're celebrating um, uh, Merlin Lehana, who is the only nurse in South Africa who have died from Ebola. Mm -hmm. We're celebrating uh, uh, Albertina Sisulu, because these are the people who assisted us in our country to transform to where we are, they were never recognized because they are black. But okay, for let's us, take, let's do more than that. We have Wendy on the line. Wendy, good morning and welcome to Health Talk. Um, good morning, yes. Uh, I just wanted to find out, please. I have somebody that's very, very interested in the nursing profession. Yeah. Okay, there is a shortage of nurses at the moment. She enrolled with Medicare. And um, her course has actually been put on hold. She's paid for it so and she, everything. She enrolled with what? Youth care? Net care. Yeah, okay. And we're just wanting to know, what are the alternatives to actually go into studying um, for the nursing profession? All right. Th thank you very much for your, for your question. We'll, we'll ask Prof. I, I didn't quite get youth, youth, youth care, or, or, but, but essentially it's about opportunities for people wanting to enter into profession. you know the nursing profession okay uh, thank you very much i think there's a uh, different opportunities for entering nursing profession as we said we have different categories yeah. we have enrolled assistant nurses we have enrolled nurses yeah. and we have Isn't professional it better, nurses perhaps we, we 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 should talk in terms of those who with metric or those without okay. metric, uh, okay. you know, w w at what, actually, what's the actually, lowest level? Actually, the minimum entry is metric, metric. with certain grades. We don't take anyone below metric ah, so yeah. for, for, for that. So, okay. yes. We would, would, would advise if you don't have metric, you go to a particular program that will equivalent you to, to metric, um, mm. as is the TVETs and so on. Do so you need metric to be a community health nurse? 
We, do, oh, we oh, currently oh. don't have community health nurse. You must be careful. They are not under the South African Nursing Council. Should we not have community health nurses? We think we should have community health care nurses. We are currently busy still discussing it. But as is, they fall under the Department of health okay. and they are falling okay. under a sitter. All right. So in, in we'll, fact, we'll, we'll get back to that. Okay. The, yeah. let's, just, so let's, let's just come answer, back to those with metric yes. now. Yeah, right? So those with metric, yeah. they can enter different programs. As we have said, we have got private colleges, we have got public colleges, and we have got universities. And all of them have got different uh, criteria yeah. that they use to uh, select their students okay so you can enter through a private college a public college and a university all right let's take yeah. another call we have samuel from the east end hello samuel welcome to health talk your, your question or comment please oh I, I, my question is clinic Okay, okay, okay Bob. Uh, do, 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 do you want I, to just I, firstly tr I, translate first before, okay. before you give a response? Yeah? Uh, basically, the question is saying um, at night, some nurses would, when they, they attend to the clinic, the community goes to the clinic, yeah. some nurses would say, no, that we're only working with emergencies. Okay. I, I think... Um, and, and the question terms, is, why, uh, why are you there? And then the question you, is, why are you there in the first place yeah. if you can't, you only do emergencies? And right. what else do you do when you don't have emergencies? Right. Well, obviously, emergency can be defined differently. But let me deal with um, the, the, the paradigm understanding of healthcare and what we should be doing. Um, you see, if you have what, let me use the lame language, it's called STD, um, sexually transmitted disease. Um, you must not stay home uh, for a longer period because sometimes nurses would tell us that, you know, I go to a particular person who comes to the clinic and tells me, I've been having this discharge, discharge for the past three months or three weeks. Yeah. It's abnormal. Mm -hmm. Now, at so, night, there is no policy that says you must only deal with uh, emergencies. But whoever comes to seek health care yeah. must be provided with care. So if there is anything, complaints must be raised properly. Okay. So to say, I came here and you refused me care. No one has the right to refuse anyone any care. All right. It's okay. The World Health. We, um, we, um, I know that we are addressing people's calls, but we're going to run out of time <laughs> yeah. quickly. And I believe we have now Sanele on the line. This is, this is going to be our last caller on this segment. Sanele, hello and welcome to Health Talk. Hello, how are you? Good, good. Your comment or question quickly, please. Uh, nursing is a big point of the South African health system, but I wanted to, 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 to understand uh, from, from, from those experts, what is their take on the new profession, clinical associate? Okay, the new clinical associate. Oh, the new clinical associate, we really think that uh, that is necessary based on the fact that a human resource for health is a challenge in our country. So the clinical associate was there to also work at the district. However, we just feel that the scope of practice must, that has already been promulgated, mm. we, they must make sure that we as nurses also give inputs mm -hmm. so that both medical profession and nursing profession has got inputs on that. Okay. But mm. we really feel that for us to have a good health resource system, yeah more especially human resource, yeah. we need to start looking at uh, ways of ensuring that we have enough staffing. Okay, just hold it there because we need to go for a short break. So, <laughs> what role can the nursing profession then play in improving our health system's resilience? More on that after the break. Stay with us. They are basically arresting him, continue to arrest him on behalf of the apartheid government. We are dealing with effects. We are not dealing with the causes. And for as long as we deal with effects, we are never going to solve this problem.
What do these people need in prison? Why, why are they there? The PAC, as Dr. Pegu is saying, has been seeking answers and they're not coming. What kind of answers are you getting? I don't think I've answered that question. I think it's a difficult question. I don't have an answer for it. How was it possible that they could operate with such impunity? The only thing you want is closure. The only thing we want is closure. And unfortunately, I don't really have sympathy for the idea that if you're too old, you shouldn't stand trial. That's Rights and Recourse with Dumile Mateza every Sunday at 2 p.m. Central African time, only on the SABC News Channel. Welcome back. Now, there's no doubt that our ailing healthcare system needs to be strengthened. So what role can the nursing profession play in providing these solutions? We want to speak to all our guests. But before that, I believe we have Sanela on the line. Busi Siwe, sorry, from KZN. Busi Siwe, hello and welcome to Health Talk. Yes, good, good morning, doctor. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Your question or comment, please? Yes, I, I would like to vote. I'm a nurse. My, myself, I'm a nurse. I'm an enrolled nurse. Right. And I've been working for 12 years as a, but as a nursing assistant, I've been working for nine years. Right. What I was not happy about while I, while, I'm, while I was working is that it take it takes the management for so many years for you to upgrade yourself for sending to to learn to learn to to the to the next. Uh, to the next level. Okay, all right. And that as nurses is making us so unhappy because we are 18. Yeah, okay. No, thank, thank you very much. I'm going to get the guests to, to respond. But before that, I believe we ho also have some tweets that have just come in. Jacob Siloma says, It is true nurses are paid peanuts. The minister doesn't care about nurses because he's a doctor. <laughs> he only cares about the doctors. Okay. Uh, so says, There's no better life in this profession. Though we're there 24 hours with a patient, no study leave or incentives. Sanella says, nurses are the backbone of our health system. What is the nurse take on in a new clinical associate profession? I think we dealt with that. Bumani says, we are faced with shortage of resources. Leadership challenges also contribute to the current situation. All right. Okay. So. We're having lots of comments. We're back <laughs> with uh, Dr. Um, Vasudnevan, and uh, we still have Professor Malawzi and uh, uh, Simon Flangwani. Do you perhaps want to deal first with the issue of uh, Busisiwe, who feels aggrieved that you know, they're not giving it, given an opportunity to upgrade themselves? I mean, she's been working at this position for, for nine years. Uh, thank you for that uh, question. I think what we have done as nurse leaders, we have realized that and we are coming up with a new qualification, which we hope it will start in 2019. I think the South African Nursing Council is here. Mm -hmm. So in that, we have managed to ensure that there will be what we call articulation mm -hmm. of uh, courses. So an enrolled nurse will be able to move to be a staff nurse and a professional nurse, and we have managed to reduce those years that was, were always a challenge. So when will that be implemented? 2019. 2019. Yes. Let me get a That's comment from the South African Nursing <laughs> Council. Yeah. So thank you very much. Um, yes, there's a lot of work that is underway uh, in terms of accrediting the new nursing qualifications. I think uh, right now many of the uh, current nursing education institutions are applying both to the South African Nursing Council as well as to the Council for Higher Education because that is a change in the system. They would have to be accredited as higher education institutions and so they have to receive higher education accreditation as well as the Nursing Council accreditation. So uh, we've had 26 uh, providers already submitting their programs. And uh, I think the biggest challenge right now is getting the provincial nursing colleges to become registered as higher education institutions to go on to provide these qualifications. Because as you know, 75% of our training in this country is done by the public nursing colleges. Yeah. 
Earlier there was, a, there was an issue around community health nurses, and I'd like your comment on that. But before that, let's take a call from Elizabeth in Johannesburg. Elizabeth, welcome to Health Talk, and your question, please. Um, it's not a question, it's a comment. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll translate. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm a nurse from more than 30 years. More than and 30 years, yeah. And I'm students who are asking me, how can they be accepted into nursing? Because looking at the recruitment that, or the method that is being used to recruit nurses these days, I think it's very biased. So okay. I don't know which strategy you can use so that we get these children who are really interested and they are committed. Okay. All right. No, thank, thank you very much. We'll, we'll invite comments from... Let's stay with the South African Nursing Council. <laughs> I think it's important to note that the nursing uh, profession, like every other profession, also has criteria. Mm. And I think it's important for us to make our communities aware of those criteria, that there's academic criteria and there's some personal attributes mm. that are all considered before a nurse is allowed to enter into a nursing qualification. Mm. And so if, the, if there's any member out there that is concerned that there are good people out there and they cannot get into nursing, well, I would appeal to them to go to a nursing school and ask what will it take for my child to be able to successfully enter a nursing program. Yeah. It's just that, you see, there's, there's a perception, whether or not it's a perception or it's real or reality, I'm not sure. But on the one hand, we're saying that there's a shortage, there's a dire shortage of nurses, mm -hmm. dire shortage of skills. Mm -hmm. But on the other, they say, but hang on, we have people that have gone through the training, mm -hmm. but are unemployed and they're just sitting there, or some of them are sitting in, in, in similar positions and not, not improving at all. So... How do we address these um, dichotomies, if I could say? So uh, I, I suppose the people that are unemployed is the ones that, that are qualified in nursing and are unemployed. Yes. It'll be well, you know, great to have a look at those individuals because to understand in which geography within our country do they sit, mm -hmm. is there a need for that skill? in that geography and then be able to say, well, where else can they be directed so that they can get suitable uh, job opportunities? Uh, but at the same time, I've got to add, because we have a shortage, it does not mean that nursing does n needs to be like have an open door to everybody right. who's looking for a profession. You still need to maintain we standards. We still need to maintain our standards. We right. still need to have criteria, just okay. like every other profession. Let's get a contribution from the nurses. <coughs> yeah. Well, each and every profession needs to evolve and stay relevant. Now, for nursing as well, we need well-grounded organic intellectuals to be produced in order to remain relevant. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm saying this because I want you to allow me to articulate it much better. Sure. There's a difference between a community health nurse mm -hmm. and a community health care worker. Mm -hmm. A community health care health nurse is somebody who's been to a training mm -hmm. and has got a yellow bar that says you are a community um, nursing qualified. Mm -hmm. Now, ordinarily, these people are the ones that can help the community. But right now, because of the challenges of uh, shortage of staff, they are based in the clinic and they are unable to do demographics. In fact, if we have enough and they are utilized properly, these are the people who can, if a clinic is in a community, you can know how many people are there, how many have got high blood pressure, diabetes. They can even know when can you do home visits and so on. Mm. But right now, they don't have even time to do that. Mm. And hence, the, the gap that was there is there and is covered by having community health care workers. Okay. Mm. And these people need to be guided by a community health, health nurse right. who has the knowledge of how to approach yeah. and give them advice. I'm, I'm afraid we're running out of time mm. and I need us to talk solutions. I'll give each one of you 30 seconds to say, mm. How do we solve these problems that we're facing in our current healthcare system, so specifically with regards to nursing? Let's start with you, Prof. I would say the first thing that needs to change is the paradigm shift from curative to primary healthcare. If the communities could be able to understand that and also the training mm. facilities could be able to train in that way, we will be able to uh, assist the public sector from the demands and the heavy loads mm -hmm. that they are currently having. 
What role, ne what role can nurses play in providing solutions? Well, solutions should be based on three approaches. Community um, profess has highlighted clearly. The community must know that if I am sick, I can get healthcare in a clinic. Not necessarily that immediately when I'm sick, I have to jump to a private hospital or a bigger hospital like Bara and the teacher hospitals. But nurses themselves, we have a role to, up, to, to uplift our profession. So we must do a lot of ground working in terms of uplifting the profession. Yeah. Much work must be done by government yeah. in terms of providing solutions to the problems that we have. The hospitals themselves must have the clinical teaching department so that you can maintain the training. But systemic challenges that we have in the country must be addressed. Okay. Your financing infrastructure. Ten, ten seconds. As so the professional gonna... organizations must provide the leadership mm -hmm. collectively. Mm -hmm. We need to come together and really uh, define our own solutions for nursing. Yeah. Because I think there's enough uh, people and critical uh, thinkers in the nursing profession yeah. and we can devise our own solution. Mm. Thank you. Great. It's been <laughs> such a fascinating discussion. Thank you so much. Our special guests, starting with Dr. Sharon Vasudevan, acting president of South African Nursing Council, Simon Tungwani, uh, president of Dinosa, and Professor Mavis, Mavis Malaudzi, uh, chairperson of Fundisa. Thank you so much for your contribution. Okay. All right. So on that note, that we come to the end of our show then today. Join us again next week on SABC News. A reminder to please share your views and comments with us via our Facebook page, SABC Health Talk, and on Twitter at SABC. Uh, now, you can watch repeat of today's show today, actually, at 2 p.m., then again on Thursday morning at 5 a.m. I'm Dr. Silo Madang. Thank you so much for watching. And, and yes, thank you so much for your calls and all those tweets, and please do take care.